Happy birthday to you. Oh, we gotta explain the video of what we're doing. <laughs> so, it's my mother's birthday. Yeah. And it was Cheyenne's birthday a few weeks ago. And I couldn't go to Shai's birthday because I was too sick. And so now I'm celebrating both of their birthdays. Yahoo! Awesome. <laughs> Man, yes. they brought her cupcake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll like hold it now. Yes. We'll let anybody hold it. Yeah. We can't do the fire. So. so, we're gonna have a pretend. <laughs> Oh Number 10 candle. Um, happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lord. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's cool. In my icing is all up in there. I'm gonna have to scoop it with a spoon. So the, the day hasn't been over here once where we haven't had to pull out of bed. She hasn't slept for hours. And we have had the epi. Oh yeah. Thank the Lord. She's, She's not, gonna walk out of here. She's still not allowed to use your can. Yeah. Use it. No, because that's where you've always had to be because of the temperature change. Whatever. She's on hydroxyurea. Yeah. Yes. That helps anybody. Don't turn your food. Huh? They were just having a discussion about going for hydroxyurea. Really? And not still everyone's just saying they didn't do anything for their reactions, just bone pain. Well, really? it may not have. I see a her. difference in her. So that's mm -hmm. all I care. Mm -hmm. So, these other people. It may not work for the other people, but it's working for Danae. She went down on the pens, huh? But yeah. she has to go down on the epi pens. Yeah, it's she really it's like the epi pens. I have to take throughout the month. But the reactions are, they're still present, but I'm able to kind of control it by my own. They're not and huge. You don't like, have to always your tongue doesn't come out of your mouth as much. It only happened the other yeah. day. You got your replacement surgery because you're in so much pain. And you're, you seem to be with the program. You know, She's I'm doing like, a lot more yeah. for herself. Well, when you're taking that much Benadryl, it's kind of hard to be in the program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really, my heart feels good. Yay. It makes me want to cry. I didn't realize you were doing this good. So cry. Unless you're totally fooling me, you're doing good. You, I'm pretty bad, <laughs> but I think that. Where's your foot up? You're doing better than when I saw you last. There we go. That's it. Yeah. If only we could get out of the house. I know, exactly. She still has awful. bad days, though, which kind of stinks. We're not yeah. You're going to have bad days with this disease. Yeah. This is disgusting. I am on my way to the oncologist this morning. I am aggravated. I cannot not hook up to feeds without having horrible stoma issues. Every time I shut off my feeds, within literally like minutes, my stomach starts growling and then the tube just starts leaking out the stoma. I have acid burns around it. I have this awful like buildup of granulation tissue on one side. I've had two GJ tubes. Uh, my first one was placed then I pulled it out for 10 months and I had a relapse and needed it again so they had to repeat the whole surgery but the surgeon put it in the same exact spot. So where the stoma had healed over the first time in, the, in place of the new one there was this weird scar tissue and it really hurts. So it's making the tube like suck in and out, in and out because my stomach's trying to digest it. And that's aggravating the granulation tissue, making it bleed and making it leak more because it's not pressed up against the skin as much. So now I have the burns to contend with. But 
Now connecting to feeds is a simple solution because it stops within minutes of connecting to feeds and my body realizes, hey, she's getting food. I don't have to do this anymore. Um, but my pancreatitis symptoms start showing up when I'm connected to feeds too long. So I don't know what to do because I can't keep having pancreatitis. And the reason why this issue is so much worse is because A, I am not receiving enough calories because of the pancreatitis issue. So I have not been able to run as much feeds like I'm supposed to. And then B, my tube is going on like four or five months old now. And the balloon is, once it's been in there, like the balloon inside of the balloon conforms to the stomach. So it's like bigger on one side than the other and it allows more leakage through and all that kind of thing. And plus my tube broke last week. I've got it rigged and like taped up because I really don't want to go to the hospital to get a tube change yet. Um, it's leaking from around the J port when the extension's attached. Oh, see, it's leaking right now. So I'm going into my appointment, running feeds at a rate of 30 mLs an hour. It's still leaking a little bit with that because it's not enough. Sometimes if my rate isn't up high enough, but I can't turn the rate up high enough because of my pancreas. So this is just a big mess. And I'm been knitting this and it looks really pretty. How long have we been waiting? I don't know, too long. I don't know, it's been a long time. I'm we've starting to been, react. We've been here since 10.45. Uh, between the pain from my tube and being out in public and only being able to take off one hour of feed since 2 a.m. It's not proving to be a good thing. Yes. And I just wanna go home and lay on the couch. And watch rain. <laughs> That's our latest binge watch Netflix show. It's good. We're on season two. I'm surprised she actually likes it because the whole medieval theme is not her cup of tea mm -hmm. normally. But this is more romance, I would say, rather than it's like action -y cause, and blood and gore because their battle scenes, honestly, are kind of lame, in my opinion. I'm not there for the battle, honey. So, but what are we going to watch next? Y'all should drop some Netflix suggestions down below. We've seen, obviously, Rain. Jane the Virgin was before that. Um, Switched at Birth. We've watched Vampire Diaries, the Gilmore original. Girls. Gilmore Girls, which is our favorite. We've Bates so Motel. Many. Parenthood. Dawson's Creek. One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. She really liked One Tree Hill. G or Gossip Girl. Yep. I loved Gossip Girl. And I couldn't believe who Gossip Girl was at the end. But if y'all haven't seen it, I won't spoil it. Um, what else? I don't know. I oh. watch Scandal. Really, really, really good. I don't like Scandal very much. I and couldn't get into it. Caught up on Grey's. Oh, yeah, we've seen Grey's. I feel like there's way more that we're there just not... There is. I'm just not remembering Remembering. It. Stranger Things. I didn't like Stranger Things. Oh no, she's weird. Unpopular opinion time. Um, um, Salvino and I have watched Game of Thrones. Yes. We're watching The Good Doctor. Um, ooh, what's that one show that was really funny? With the chef. Chef? Uh-huh, the chef. She's like hired like as a personal chef for this entrepreneur. Have no idea. You must have been and watching it's hilarious. With somebody else. And personal chef. Oh, young and hungry. That was hilarious. I kind of inappropriate, but kind of hilarious at the same time. Yeah, I didn't watch that. Um. Hmm. And then we tried watching Tudors, and it was awful. I'm sitting here putting together a puzzle. It has flowers. My appointment yesterday went good. It was just a checkup. I had labs done and then a urine sample. I actually didn't get the labs back. 
they were running a little behind but normally i get my lives back but that time i didn't so they should pop up on my chart and if there's anything like urgent i'm sure i will get a phone call but i asked for the urine sample because when my cells are flaring they infiltrate the bladder and when they infiltrate the bladder it causes sensations of burning urgency and frequency it's called cystitis and just inflammation of the bladder but it has been significantly worse lately and in combination with that i've been having retention i can't empty my bladder completely i have had issues with this in the past they diagnosed me with a neurogenic bladder but with the retention you can develop frequent utis but my other bladder symptoms from the cystitis also are symptoms similar to UTI, so I can never differentiate whether it's just a flare up or if I actually have an infection. And with a central line, I don't wanna let an infection go linger on too long because it could potentially spread. I got the sample yesterday. I haven't heard anything back. So I'm assuming no news is good news, and that means it's all clear. And for those of you that watched my last vlog with the man that was kind of rude about the essential oil diffuser in the office that I had an appointment at for my mitochondrial disease workup and my cereal folate deficiency results, I decided not to attend that appointment. I have been way too sick, number one, to travel and to have that extra trigger when that man was just insinuating that my reactions are just because I'm anxious and because I know the diffuser is there rather than a true mast cell problem. Obviously, they do not understand the correlation between the mast cell disease and mitochondrial disease and all the related conditions. I know that's just the guy who answers the phone, but in this particular case, he is the husband of the doctor. And I know just because that's her husband does not mean they share the same opinions. I know that just because you are, you don't always have to agree with your spouse on everything, but due to the drama that has went down it now is not the right time my oncologist put the um put a referral into a geneticist locally who deals nothing who deals with nothing but metabolic conditions they're really picky on who they will let in the doctor usually if she does not she does not take on patients who she does not really strongly feel that there could be a metabolic condition going on but she did i just got word yesterday that they accepted me i have an appointment on april 4th i'm going to wait and see how that appointment turns out and then if need be reschedule with the other people and in the meantime the oncologist prescribed the leucovorin which is to treat the cerebral folate deficiency until I can get into the geneticist and they can alter the prescription from there and then figure out why I have cerebral folate deficiency, whether it's caused from a mitochondrial disease or something else that we don't know. I'm still reacting to the TPN components that we've trialed, unfortunately. Between all the drug shortages, they're trying to find more things that I tolerate, but it ordering its process and takes time. So I'm still hanging in there. I only have a choice but to. So just, things have been kind of miserable. But my weight seems to have plateaued off at 89. And it has not dropped further, thank the Lord. But yeah.